Welcome back everybody. It's been an hour and a half and my dough has risen to its desired double volume. It is quite large. It is quite lovely too. So I'm gonna tilt my camera down a little bit because we are gonna be rolling uh, and filling and cutting our cinnamon rolls in this second part video. So I'm gonna get rid of that towel and just so you guys can set up your stations at the ready I have some extra flour to flour my workstation for the rolling I have a bowl that is a half a cup of brown sugar and a tablespoon of cinnamon I really like cinnamon so I put in more if you're not that crazy about it maybe put in a little bit less then I have the schmear the schmear is a half a cup of butter that is soft. It is room temperature, it's soft, it's schmearable. So that I mixed with more cinnamon because like I said, I like cinnamon. And we have that uh, to the side ready. I also have, this is my favorite kitchen. This is also a favorite kitchen tool of mine. So this is called an offset spatula. Um, mine is a mini and it's adorable and it's great for Smearing. Then I also have a knife. I'm not using one of my fancy chef's knives because I'm going to be cutting on a stainless steel table. I don't want to dull my blade, so I'm just going to use this cheap little extra blade that I have. I also have a prepared 9 by 13 pan that has, I forgot that there was maple syrup in there. So I buttered it, and then for extra fun, I Put in some maple syrup so usually for sticky buns if you just wanted it to be like a regular cinnamon bun then just put butter at the bottom of the pan and up the sides for sticky buns um, usually recipes call for corn syrup I really don't like using corn syrup because it's actually terrible for you um, I happen to have maple syrup um, so I put that in instead and we'll see how that goes I didn't put too much because I don't really have all that much but I feel like if you wanted to have a nice, you know, thin film of syrup, you could do that. So I'm gonna set that aside. Now, to roll, I have my lovely rolling pin and we're gonna get started. So we're gonna, t I'm just gonna move all these things out of the way so I have ample space to work. And first, I'm going to flour my work surface so that my dough don't stick. Okay, and you will be probably adding um, more flour as you roll since this is a sticky dough. Dough, remember, we don't punch, we press. And I'm going to, oh, it's so soft. Okay, I really like this dough, like really like this dough. The brioche dough that I made yesterday, it was stiffer. Um, this one is like supple and you will see, hold on, we'll tilt down. There we go. So you can even start pulling it out a little bit uh, and even just flatten it out with your fingers. So we're rolling this to an 18 by 11 rectangle. I am going to pause that beeping. Sorry about that, my oven timer was going off on me. So like I said, we are gonna be rolling this blob of dough into a large rectangle, approximately 18 by 11 inches. Um, if you don't have a ruler, maybe use a tape measure. If not, you want a large rectangle. So again, more flour on my work surface. I'm also going to flour my rolling pin and it's so soft. Oh my God, it's, it's like really gorgeous. I'm so excited about this. Um, the brioche dough that I did yesterday, it wasn't like what I think, what I imagine a cinnamon bun to be. Um, I want it to be really soft, um, flaky. I don't want it to be flaky. That's not what I want. I want like just like a soft, delicious, sticky dough, but really like I want soft and I want gooey. It was not soft. It wasn't gooey enough, um, so that's why I wanted to try this dough instead. So this is looking 
pretty close to what I want. And I do have multiple tape measures, of course, in my kitchen. Will it ruin the recipe if it's not exactly 18 by 11? No, it won't. Maybe your Danish will, your rolls will be a little bit bigger, might be a little bit smaller. That is 18 on the nose, y'all. <laughs> And it's 14, so it's a little bit bigger, and that's okay. And we're gonna leave it, and it's cool. Um, it's not gonna ruin your recipe, so really don't fret about it. If you're looking for a large rectangle, you don't have to have perfectly sharp edges. Again, not a big deal. Now, time for the schmear. So I am gonna take this schmear, and I'm just gonna slap it on like that. And now with my, hold on, offset spatula, you just sort of smooth it over the surface of the dough. And I am gonna leave um, maybe like a slight, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smear it to all the sides. It's the next part that I'm not gonna cover the entire surface with. Oh wow, I'm getting pretty excited about this. I don't know about you guys. So I've seen recipes that called for um, just brushing the dough with melted butter. I did that last time. I think it needed more butter. Um, so we're doing this. I think this is more attuned to this type of pastry application, I think. Like, I mean, the secret to life is butter. So let's take every opportunity, take advantage of every opportunity that we can to add more butter. Um, and unlike the brioche dough, which has lots of butter already in the dough itself, this one, if you remember, only had a quarter cup of butter, which considering that you're making 12 cinnamon rolls is really not that much. So, smear the butter. So my butter is nicely smeared all over, covering every possible inch of dough. All right, that is done. You know what, I got a little extra smear, why not? Get that out of my way. We like to keep a clean workstation, so débarrasser your things which just means move your things that you're no longer using out of the way. Now, for the cinnamon sugar. So I just blended that together with my fingers. Um, and now we liberally and generously cover the top of sugar. So now I am gonna leave a little ridge at the top edge, the, the long top edge of the dough. And that's just gonna help me seal the roll once I get a roll in. But here at the bottom edge, that's gonna be like your gooey center, technically. So I think I want some extra sugar there, to be honest. I just want a lot of sugar. Um, it's so weird, I really don't eat pastry under normal circumstances, um, but I guess the rules have gone out the window with all of this madness. Um, and even though I wasn't wild about the rolls that I made the other day, I still haven't been able to stop eating them. Um, and since they were slightly harder than I would have liked, what did I do with them <laughs> the next day? I cut it in half, I put more butter on and fried it and made like a fried brioche, which is really quite excellent if you ask me. So now to roll, to roll. Starting from the bottom edge, so the long edge. I like to start from the middle and I'm gonna like press it up and you begin your roll. Now, you can continue rolling from the middle and like roll to one side. You do want it to be like nice and tight. You don't wanna have too much space. And then you can just keep going. So then I sort of go along the sides. If there's really a lot of excess flour on the underside, on the under, side of your dough, then just like brush it off either with a brush or your fingers. 
and then just keep going and you just go oh my god the dough is so soft i'm like really happy with this i'm i i'm thinking it's gonna bake up to exactly what i want um and you just keep rolling until you can't roll no more and again see i'm brushing as i go because there's a little too much excess flour and now some people say to cut off the ends. I say don't hate on the ends. Why? That's like wasting a beautiful thing. So I would say not to do that. So you'll have not perfect ends. Big deal. Now to cut. So you can see my beautiful long dough roll. I'll move it a little bit so we can see. And this is going to get cut into 12 pieces. So I like to go in half. So I'll cut one in the middle. Oh, I might need a sharper knife for this. They're already like big and fluffy and beautiful. So then I will, now I have two halves. So each half I will cut in half. And then each of those I'll do in threes. So we'll have three, six, nine, twelve. That's math. So you're learning all kinds of things. So, cut. I'm sorry about the noise. It's just we have to cut on this surface. It is what it is. Um, a means to an end. Oh, wow. And that's that. So then that's going to be one, two, three, and one, two, three. All right. So it's squished down a bit as I cut them to be expected, but that's okay. You know why? Because they will rise again. So you put the cut side up, facing up. Um, and I'll just smear it around. And you wanna leave some space. I'll show you how this is gonna look once I place them all in. Oh my God. Okay, this is looking more like what I wanted it to look like. The other ones were beautiful. Um, but it was a much stiffer dough and I want it to be like a soft dough and this is looking soft. And you want to leave some space in between each roll because remember they are going to rise. So these are not as, let's say, pristine or as nicely round as the other ones. They are bigger. But to me that means fluffy. And I'm okay with that. Hold on. I'm futzing around with it quite a bit, which I'd rather not do, but it is what it is. So, these are much bigger. All right, so it's not perfect, but that's okay. So they're arranged in the pan, and now we're going to cover it back up and let them rise again. So grab your same dampened towel, cover it, let it rise, and then we'll be back for the final wrap up. Later.